everybody. My name is Klaatu. This is the talk on programming with Lua in the Love Game Engine. Um, this talk is meant for people who have really zero programming experience because I found that Lua is a great training and teaching tool. Um, arguably, possibly easier to learn, I, I, I venture to say, than even Python, which is kind of famously you know, smooth to kind of get into. Um, let's see what's on my slide. Stuff I've done, yes, okay. So I am um, a person on the internet, so I do internet things, but I also do tabletop things. So one of the things that I did last year was I ran a Kickstarter and it failed, so I did it anyway and I designed a card game called Petition. If you want to play this card game, hit me up after this talk because I love playing it and need more people to play it because only 20 people in the world know that it exists, so petition. Um, game design blog, I have a game design blog at mixedsignals.ml and I wrote a book on this, the, the talk that I'm giving right now, there's a book version of this called Lua on the Raspberry Pi and I made sort of a short link, it's, it's a redirect, uh, mixedsignals.ml slash Lua, it'll take you to the A-Press uh, publishing site and you can purchase the book. If you are in charge of large installations of books, like a library, purchase several of them. Uh, I need it. So that's what I've done. Before we get started, actually, I'm going to, don't mistake this for an icebreaker activity, because I'm not, I don't, I, I like ice. I don't need it to be broken. But yeah, you can do this. You can, you can play. Green shirts, but you can still play. So take, take one sheet of paper and pass this pad of paper around, please. Oh, geez, that's, yeah. Make sure everyone gets a, a sheet. And on that sheet, I want you to write a number, one through 10, your choice, and then a win or lose condition. Is that clear? For someone else to guess what you have I said nothing more than a win or lose condition. So we're going to make a game together, blindly. Um, so yeah, do that. And I'm going to give you lots of time for it. We're not, going to, we're not going to resolve this yet. Just make sure you get a piece of paper, write down a number 1 through 10, and then a win or a lose condition. Okay. So while you're doing that, let's talk about Lua a little bit. So for personal use, Lua is really nice because it is what is called strongly typed, uh, which kind of means in practice that it's really, really consistent. Uh, it tends to be, in my opinion, quite predictable. Um, there are little things in Lua that once you learn one part of it, then you can almost guess the rest of it. Um, the same is not true for some other programming languages. Um, not to pick on Python, but I, I think Python sometimes can be a little bit inconsistent. You know, like you, you'll type something like, if foo is bar, or, or is, yeah, is bar, then do something. And then if you try, I don't know, if foo is more than bar or greater than bar, it, it doesn't know. So it's like it tricks you into natural language and then throws you back out. Lua tends to just be pretty straightforward. I mean. Whether or not it's friendly or whatever is a completely different question. I think it is, but it is consistent. Uh, Lua does not care about white space, so if you're used to languages that do care about white space, you do not have to worry about that in Lua. That is not a thing that Lua cares about. You can put as many spaces or tabs or blank lines. Lua doesn't care. Lua is also not an object-oriented language. It is um, it's basically a front end to C. Um, but there are some really cool tricks that you can do in Lua, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit today, to mimic object-oriented actions. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Uh, it's just something for you to know for the future. Lua also uses a simple syntax. It is easy to remember, I find. And Lua is really, I think, easy to teach. Uh, there are there are a couple of tricks in Lua that once you learn them, you basically know Lua. It's, it's really kind of nice. Now, if you're a developer, um, Lua is 
is really simple for a programming language. They, they advertise that their manual is only 100 pages. But I mean, that's good. Like, if, if you think about as much as has been written about you know, C or C++ or Python, like Lua fitting into 100 pages is kind of cool. Lua is small. It's about 25,000 lines of C code. It is embeddable. It runs in like 300 kilobytes of memory or something ridiculous like that. It's portable because it's just written in boring old C. It's nothing fancy. It's just a really sort of minimal kind of language. Uh, and it's really easy to package. You can throw Lua and liblua into your package, and you've, you've just distributed Lua. It's, it, it is, it, there's not a whole lot to it. And that's my slideshow. OK. So now um, I'm going to, yes? Yep. Are Lua and Love. Lua and Love 2D is the 2D is the the thing. Yeah. So if if you're just joining us, uh, you want to install Lua, a package called Lua, which on whatever computer you are using, it might be apt install Lua, might be DNF install Lua, and then generally it'll give you a bunch of choices, and you can choose 5.1, you can choose 5.2, you can choose 5.3. It doesn't really matter. I am using 5.1.5. That's what I've got on this computer. So if you want to mirror exactly what I'm doing, that's what you would want to do. And then Love 2D is the game engine that we're going to be using uh, to, to give us graphics. And that is uh, the more recent you can get, the better. But for, for, the, for this talk, we're going to keep it pretty simple. We shouldn't run into any issues if you have to fall back on a, an, an old version. I did run into some problems on old versions when I was doing like particle effects and stuff, but we're not going to do that right now. If you want particle effects, buy the book. There's all kinds of particle effects in there. Tiling, lots of cool stuff. Um, OK, so does anyone not have uh, Lua and Love 2D installed yet? Oh, OK. Cool. Okay. Cool. Love. Sorry, it's not Love 2D. It is Love 2D technically on other, on other places. Yeah. So the trick is, if you're on Ubuntu. You can, um, you can go to Love2D's site and um, get a PPA from, from them. That will install a, a more recent version for you. Which, is, I mean, it's not a horrible thing to have, so it might be worth it. Is the um, pad of paper somewhere? I would like to write down a number and a win condition myself. I think. Oh, did, did everyone, does anyone not have a piece of paper in front of them with a number and a win or a lose condition on it? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then that means no. Did you not get one? That's okay. I'll, um, I'll pass this sort of to you and then you can pass it up and over. So what we're doing is, if, if, you've missed, if you've missed anything, we're writing down a number, 1 through 10, on a piece of paper. And then we're, write, we're writing a win or a lose condition. And whatever that means to you is what you can base your answer on. There's no right or wrong. That's the, that's the good news. All right. Just so that we all know that there's no tricks. I've written it down, folded the paper, and I've placed it under my box petition, which is available at thegamecrafter.com slash 
whatever it was, mixed signals slash games slash petition. Um, okay, so let's get started then. So um, I want to start at the beginning with Lua, and uh, we're going to just kind of jump right into it, really. So the first thing that you want to do probably is make a project directory. And your project directory should more or less contain, uh, I probably need to just make that white on black and drop the green, huh? All right. Okay. Get there. Okay, so you're making a directory, and you can call it whatever you want. It's gonna be a dice-based game, and it should more or less contain these files. Um, you don't have to put the credit in the license, but you wanna make a directory called font, you wanna make a directory called image. I, I do IMG, so I don't have to type as much. Uh, and then eventually we're gonna make a file called main.lua. So yeah, more accurately, your, your directory will contain font and image right now. Now, the Love 2D engine, um, is pre-programmed, so, so I, should, I should back up actually even more. So Lua is the programming language, right? So that's what we'll be typing. We'll be typing Lua commands, uh, a Lua program. And that Lua program will be interpreted by a game engine called Love. The game engine is just a bunch of libraries sort of pre-programmed to respond to specific commands from you. So rather than having to write the code for their, for, for, to display an image on screen, we're going to just say, display an image on screen. Love will interpret that command and display images on screen for us. Love is pre-programmed to look for a file called main.lua. So there's nothing Lua specific about the, the, the file name main.lua, but there is something love specific to main.lua. In other words, to make this really short and simple, if you're programming something in the love, for the love game engine, you want your, your file that's going to be executed, it needs to be called main.lua, okay? So I'm gonna open up a file called main.lua in a text editor and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a hash exclamation mark slash user USR slash bin slash ENV Lua, space Lua. Strictly speaking, it's not necessary for the Love Game Engine to see that. 
It does make things nice though. Uh, it's a good habit to get into. Okay, so one of the nice things about love is that it enforces a structure onto your program. Um, that's not necessarily great for the rest of your life, but certainly as you're learning, this may actually really make it easy to kind of understand uh, what, what you have to do to get a program that sort of makes sense. So we're going to make three sections to our code. And this is really, honestly, this is not a horrible thing to do for whatever you're writing. Uh, I, I kind of, I stole this, this, this model from Lua when I'm teaching Python now because it's, it's a really, really sane way of, of structuring a program. So we're gonna make three sections, and we'll just leave them empty right now, but they need to exist, so might as well make them now. One is called um, function love.load. And then at the end, at the, at below that, put the word end. So a function, does anyone know what a function is? Yeah, so a function is some code that is kind of packaged into a recipe that you can then call later on to run it over and over again so you don't have to keep writing the same code. So function love.load is the part of your code that when someone launches the love game engine, that's gonna happen first. The next function that we're gonna make is called uh, love.draw. Can anyone guess what that's gonna do? Yeah, it draws whatever people will see on the screen. So that means, because this is a motion image, right, it's, it's a video game, so it's refreshing constantly. So this function is a loop. Anything you put into love draw is gonna happen like, ev like every millisecond. It happens over and over and over and over again. Which is good, because possibly you want some you want it to refresh, you want something to, you want some animation in there. And I think that's, I think we're gonna stick, I think we'll, we'll just keep with those two functions first. So one to load everything in, and then one to continue drawing lots and lots. So we're gonna try to get something on screen pretty quickly here, just so you see how these things interact with one another. And so the first thing that we'll do, uh, if a computer's gonna draw a window on the screen, what do you think some of the attributes that it would want to know would be? Size of the window, right? So we can, we can define that and, um, for reasons that I won't necessarily go into right now, I'm gonna do that above the love.load function. Um, they're gonna get loaded in and, and then love by Lua and then love will execute the love.load function. You can put it in love load. It's okay to do that, I think. I haven't done it in a while. Um, but it's, it's sorta of best to leave it outside. And I'm just gonna, I'm using CW and CH for canvas width and canvas height. And I'm gonna make it fairly small here. Okay, so now the big question is, if we want to um, draw something, well, so let's, let's see what ha would happen. Let's, let's just try this. Let's, let's save what we have. Okay, saved it. 
And now from, from my terminal, from within the directory, does, everyone, does anyone not know how to get to their project directory in a terminal? That's fine. Um, so the way that you're going to do that, where, where did you make your directory? Where is it? I don't believe you. I think you're lying to me. I still, I don't think you're there. So where is your directory? <laughs> do you, yeah, do you have a terminal open? Okay, so do a, yeah, do, do a PWD and tell me where you are right now, which, which is what PWD will tell you. Where? I think I go somewhere and then myself That's what I'm thinking, yeah. So you're, you're in your home directory right now, and you've made a project directory there in your home directory? Or can you make one? Um, so I made a directory uh, in the flow bit. Ah, uh, okay. Make a, yeah, make a directory in your home directory. I, so I should have been more clear about that. Make, take that directory and put it into your home. Yeah, cool. And then, once that is there, do a CD, and then a tilde slash uh, whatever your directory was called. So maybe it's dice demo or whatever you called it. Then you will be, then you will be, you're there? Yeah, uh, so you're there. Fantastic. Anybody else? Anybody else? I want this to work. I'm more interested in this working than not talking. Cool. All right, if you're not telling me you don't know where you are, then that's on you. Okay, so now we'll type in from that directory. So as long as you do a PWD and you get back the path to the demo directory that you made, we're gonna just type in love and then a dot, love space dot. That means run love within this folder. Oh, okay, yeah, so love 2D dot possibly. And you should, Ideally, get that, which isn't super exciting, but, but there you go. <laughs> okay. You might, you might see errors about like the Jack server not being started. That's not an error, that's just a warning. It's just because we're not, we're not utilizing the audio system that, that it thinks we might want to use. What's that? Sure. So, and that, that's good because actually I want to, I don't know where my stupid command is, uh, emax dash nw main. Okay, so what we're doing here, this is, this is pretty much all you need right now to, to get that wonderful blank window that we got. Oops. This is your, this is your source code. And so what we're doing, does anyone have any idea who, does anyone who's maybe hasn't programmed all that much have any idea what, what we are really doing here up at the three? Yeah, we're setting a variable. So all, does everyone, I'm going to tell you what a variable is now, instead of asking. Um, a variable is like a box. And boxes like to have things in them. So in programming languages, we're allowed to make any number of boxes than that we want, we, they're called variables. We can just make them for free. We just get to just call them whatever. And usually the syntax, not always, but usually the syntax is something like, hey, here's a variable name that I just made up, equals, and then whatever you want to put into the box. So box, here's some data that I wanted to put into the box. Now it's there in the variable. And then anytime you want to refer to the, the contents of the box, you just call the box name and the programming language knows what you're talking about. So those are variables. You've made your first variables now. So we have set um, a width and a height. This is a little bit, uh, a little bit taller than wide, but that's because I'm kind of having it in mind for a, a mobile phone. So I figure people will probably play my little game this way. So that's, that's why I chose those, those dimensions. 
OK, so I think we're all. Excuse me. Yeah. When, when do we know actually what's up? The odd number. Yeah, that's true. I'm not sure why that is. It should have looked correct. Quite possibly, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to put stuff into into our into our code, uh, and I'm going to start throwing out a bunch of like things at you that aren't going to make a whole lot of sense, or they'll make sense while I'm telling you, and then you'll walk away later and you'll think, you know what, that guy was totally not cool because he was just throwing names at us, and how do I, how am I ever going to remember that stuff? I have an answer for that. Um, so if you want to type that while I tell you the, the answer. Why are these things not showing up? There's, oh, I know why. Um, here, let me just switch to text mode. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, so, so things like love.window.set, capital T for title, and then the name of my game, love.window.set mode, all that stuff, oh, there's some stuff that's not on the right line, or that's getting cut off. Here we go. Do I care about the nope. Well, not for this purpose. Um, and yeah, the, the, so these, these things here, these magical settings that I'm just kind of using without explaining what they are, where they come from. Those come from love, from the game engine. So those are, those are functions, just like we've written here, function love.load. Um, they're, they're functions of their own. Now those functions aren't in our code because they exist in the love game engine code. So when you installed the love game engine, you installed unknowing to yourself the, the, all these other functions, these love.window functions and stuff like that. So, um, oh, and there you go. Yeah, and that's why the, uh, the size wasn't correct, right? Because we didn't, we hadn't set a mode of the window. So in this case, what we're doing is we're, we're telling love when it's loading. And remember I said the first thing it does is looks, it looks for a function called love.load. So we're telling it, hey, I want you to call the window dice and I want you to set some, uh, set the mode of the window, which is just what, you know, the way that they chose to express that we're going to now sort of control how the window looks. So I'm going to, um, does everyone have that typed in? Okay. I mean, we'll come back to it anyway. So, um, so I guess I'll quit. Actually, I wouldn't have to even do that. I should just leave that open. I should leave it in text mode. And then, oh no, okay, so tmux doesn't know how to do that. Okay, never mind. Um, so then we're going to do a love dot again. And now look at the window. Oop, not that window. This window. There you go. That looks a little bit more like that, sort of. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so. Does that make sense to everybody? And, and look at the title, dice. So whatever you called your, whatever you used for the set title, that's what inherited, the, that's where that value came from. So I, I, I really hate when, when learning a programming language or teaching a programming language, when all these special things start coming out and you're just, you're just like, well, how am I ever gonna remember? Or how, how do I even ever find out that, um, that there's such a thing as love.window.setTitle? And the way that you find out is you go to uh, your web browser and you look up, neither can I actually, there we go. You look up love2d.org and you go to the wiki, in this case. And see, see here on the left, there's all these love.things. 
Those are all the cool things that you can do with love. Now, not all of them are gonna mean anything to you yet, but that is at least where you find out what they expect to receive from you and, and what's available to you. So, I don't know, how do you play audio in a love game? Probably the love.audio uh, function, the library. And yeah, sure enough, there's a bunch of stuff. So when in doubt, just go to the documentation and just look at the, 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 the reference of all the different libraries that love has for you, and then you can, um, you can do stuff. Okay, so the real power of Lua, we may as well uh, get to it right now, are what call, are, 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 the real power is what is called a table. Um, a table in Lua is what other programming languages call an array, A-R-R-A-Y. I don't know if there might be some technical differences, I don't really know, like, you know, I haven't looked at the code that constructs all these things, but, but that's, they're basically the same thing. So if you've ever used an array in any programming language, or probably in math, um, then it's, it's, it's the same thing. And Lua tables unlock really about 80% of the language, to be honest, uh, including the stuff like the object-oriented sort of mimicking. So here's a comment in Lua, not in text mode again. Two dashes and some words is a comment. So Lua ignores anything after two dashes. So I'm gonna do two dashes and I'm just gonna kind of make note that this is setting the screen. Uh, size, I could say, set, set screen size. And that way when we look at this later, we'll, we'll remember, oh yeah, that's what that did. So now we're gonna create um, some tables. So create um, tables. And I think what we'll do is we'll call one local Dave equals curly brace, curly brace. And the other one's gonna be local Hal equals curly brace, curly brace. Now you don't know why that's cool yet, but, but tables are really great. And here's one of the reasons. Um, how can I demonstrate this? quickly. So Lua uses tables to describe a variable, or at least that's how we're using it. So in other words, we want two players in our little dice game that we're, that we're building together. And so one is going to be Dave and one is going to be Hal. One's going to be the computer and one's going to be the human at the controls. Each of them will have different aspects to them. Since they are each a table, we can just throw variables into their tables and that way we're building kind of our players. It's like an array. It is exactly like an array, yeah. Yeah. So if we do, for instance, so if we do, um, let's do, This will be a little bit funky because of an update to love. Um, it's kind of annoying, but that's okay. So we're gonna do a local dot Dave, uh, Dave dot color rather, local space Dave dot color. And we're going to define it as a set of numbers. And this is kind of where it gets ugly. Actually, sorry, we don't need the, the local there. Just dave.color equals, and then a bunch of numbers. So these numbers are um, RGB values. Um, this is, so the way that love expresses colors has changed. And being from a video background, I kind of associate color as zero through 255 shades of some value RGB. Uh, so this is how I write it. You can also write it as a decimal from zero to one. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I can't think like that. So I, I take what I want to write and then just divide it by 255. So, sorry. Um, you can just copy these numbers. Um, if you, 
are familiar with how HTML colors work. This is basically the same thing. If you take a hex code, break it into two, three sets of two digit numbers, you can just kind of set the, you can turn up the R and dial down the G and up the blue and you'll get purple and so on. So those are, those are numbers and they're gonna represent a color. Um, I, I want to say yes to that. Um, yeah, I don't, I can't think of any time that I've ever had to do anything special for it, so. I'm copying in the wrong values. Hopefully you're not copying me. Probably you are, because I'm giving the talk. Okay, there we go, that, that'll do, that'll do. All right, so I'm gonna do something now to sort of reinforce a couple of things which you'll thank me for momentarily. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna paste this one in, and this note that this is in the love.load function. So that means that when we launch love, this is gonna get loaded right away. And it is using the graphics library for love, so it's love.graphics. And then within that library, it's using the set background color with a capital B and a capital C. Set background color, no U in color. Uh, set background color. And then it gives it, again, some of those weird numbers that I like to use, um, which to me is perfectly clear. Um, what's that? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely want to do the set <coughs> background color. So we probably can guess what that's going to do, so let's test it. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll test it separate from you so that I don't have to take that screen away while I do it. Um, so if you do a love dot in your, in your project directory right now, you should see that. Or a syntax error, could, could, could see that. Anyone else got a syntax error? Yep. <laughs> oh wait, there's the, oh no, it's the same, sorry. There we go, all right. So this is in the love.load um, function. Could be, I don't feel like it should be. Do you have curly braces around the colors? Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, what kind of? Oh, what? Oh, yeah, sorry, I did that initially by accident, sorry to confuse you. Um, yeah, once we've established that the variable exists, we, we, we just call the variable by name. We just, there's a variable, it's called Dave, and then we can just call it Dave. So in fact, I'll even put a little comment here just to kind of separate it out from everything else. Call it, oh, For players, there we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't, apparently. Um, so any, any more syntax errors, or are we all seeing a green? Okay, just for, for, for fun. Try moving 
it, this whole thing, into, I'm just curious as to what will happen, into the draw function. Are you guys, what version of love are you on out of curiosity? Nine. Nine, okay. That could be, could be the, but wait, you're on, no, someone, you're on nine, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, I, I heard a voice and decided that even though the person whom I was speaking to whose mouth wasn't moving, I just decided that he was the one talking. Um, <laughs> the person right behind you, you're on nine? Um, or did you? I'm having, I'm having issues. Okay. Trying to get, uh, running. Oh, so, love in general. Yeah. yeah oh. Oh. Just oh, okay. Yeah. That's what, what too bad. Yeah. yeah but okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So we'll see. Nothing. It's just not not rendering it correctly. That is interesting. Um, we'll have to see. Yeah. What? I mean. Hopefully that will not persist through the whole project. Um, I don't remember ever encountering that particular issue. You know what it might be? I'll bet. I'll bet it is. Uh, uh, me, I'm running love eleven uh, dot one or something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the. No, wait, that's not. No, that is. Yeah. It's the RGB values. Okay, so um, instead of, hey everybody, I figured something out. Um, so move, move your background thing back to the love.load. And then instead of my wacky numbers, just drop the slash 255. Just give it, in this case, 25 comma, 125 comma, 75. Yeah, because it, I, I forgot, or I didn't forget, but I didn't make that connection that as of, I think, 11-ish, they decided for whatever reason to go from zero to one, with zero being... Yeah, so so that's what's happening. So cool. I hope this has been a valuable lesson to everyone about debugging. What's that? Yeah, exactly. That that too. That. Um, okay, cool. So is it? So is anyone? Is anyone feeling totally lost? I mean, I know someone's having an issue with installing, but. Is everyone else approximately nearby where I am? I don't know that it's worth mentioning, but I very much know. Oh. And it, I, it's just sort of Chromebook difficulties, which you okay. could possibly have for, and it's fine. Um, what? So I am following along as so well. Well, I'm trying to do it. That's what I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So it's it's the display server rather than anything else. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that's too bad. It's still good. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going then. So, so we know how to um, create, create a background color. That's great. Uh, so now we will... How do you make it lighter and darker color? You kind of have to do like math sort of in your head. So it's like, so two, 25 is pretty low. We, like if you picture it as a color mixer, 25 would be pretty low on the red. Uh, the green would be pretty sort of in the middle. So if, you want, so if you want it all lighter, then you need to dial everything up equally. So instead of 25, 125, 75, maybe you would do math. <laughs> uh, like 35, 135, 85. 
that would do it by like that much, but yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, so for Dave and Al dot color, uh, should we drop the two fives off? The yes. Level? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so for for Dave and Hal colors, you also need to. Uh, drop the slash 255. So if you're on version 9 or whatever, none of your numbers should have a slash 255 because you're, you're using a traditional, well, for me, what a traditional RGB scale would look like. Not for the love developers. Okay, so we're gonna have to do some, some legwork now um, because we wanna actually get like a game going. So what we're gonna do is try to find some graphics. Um, and is everyone on, is anyone not online right now? Cool, okay. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna throw some graphics on a website real quick. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Okay, so if everybody, if everybody goes to, um, trying to figure out how to convey a, a URL quickly to you, I'll just type it into the code. Don't, don't type this. Um, get images from http colon slash slash slacker media dot info slash tank slash stuff dot zip. You should be able to w get it or just go there in a website, uh, web browser, and it should start downloading. And that's going to have some images and some fonts. There's nothing special about these images and fonts. They are um, free content that I got from openclipart.org, which is a fantastic website if you need graphics you know, for, for practically anything. They're just, it's a great site. Uh, and also fonts from uh, fontlibrary.org, I think, so. Um. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. I mean, maybe I did it wrong. <laughs> It, it does work? Okay. I should know the curl command, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can put it on a thumb drive, probably. Well, it's coming now. It's yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Some of yeah? Okay. Yeah, it's going. So unzip, <laughs> unzip that folder and put the images into the IMG folder and the fonts in the font folder. Oh, cool. Wow, that's fancy. Um, yeah, so 
if they're not there, put them there. Um, and you should see some fonts and some images in, in your directory. This is an important concept. If, you're, if, you're, if you do web design at all, then you're, this is probably old hat to you. But if not, it's really, really important for your own sanity um, to when you're building a project, whether it's a web project, a love game that you're programming, um, a video production, music product, anything that you are working on, you should have a project directory. And then in that project directory, you should be copying everything that needs to live with that project into that project folder. Really. And that way, when you archive it later, you'll have everything that you need. It's like a self-contained unit. Um, that's particularly important for this, because the end result of all this is that you're going to package everything up that's in your project directory. And if your fonts and your images aren't in there, then your game is not going to work. So. So if anyone had to hazard a guess, um, how do you think, and pseudocode is acceptable here, how do you think we would um, assign a default image to represent Dave or Hal? Pseudocode is perfectly acceptable, so you can just sort of make stuff up. But how, how, how would we do that if anyone had to? Set image, maybe, yeah? Yeah. But what, so what, no, 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 you're, 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 don't, look, don't look at the manual. Um, no, wait, do look at the manual. What am I talking about? That's great. Someone just wanted to look at a manual. Um, love dot something, something, set something. Now, what, to what variable would, will we assign this something? Does anyone have a, a notion as what that would look like? So, so Something? Wait, what? Like Dave Thick, like local Dave Thick. Not local. I, I lied about local. We, we set it local once, and we don't ever have to say that again. So right. Dave. So just Dave Thick. I, I would name it Dave. Dave. Dave dot Thick, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, because remember, in 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 love, when you make a table, and that's what these things are, those little curly braces at the very top. When you make that. You can then sort of expand on it as much as you want with a dot and then whatever word you want to use. So if we want to assign a default image to a variable, we could say, OK, Dave dot, I don't know, give me a word that would make sense in this instance. Image. And I do IMG because typing is just not in. Um, and then we could say it's going to equal, um, and then we need to look up the, the function for this. Does anyone look that up? Love.graphics. Dot, what was it? New image. Uh, and then parentheses, parentheses. And then the full. The full path of the, not the full path, but like the path of the image, which since we're in our project directory, is um, IMG and then slash, and then whatever name of the image that we want to use, which in this case we'll just use die one dot PNG. That is, it should be inside. Um, Correct. Yeah, um, we could try. No, I don't think I don't think it would work up there because we want l love itself. Love it, love is going to look at the function uh, love dot load. So stuff that we're we're telling directly to love, we want it to be inside that function. No. Cool. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's like habit versus what will actually work. Sometimes they're completely different things. So now we can do, we can use the same exact logic for, well, actually, let's not do that yet. Let's just save that. Let's launch, see what happens. Does anyone have a guess as to what's going to happen? Oh, that's the wrong one. What 
What's that? No, I know. Correct. OK, so the problem is that um, we've declared this thing that we got right out of the manual. It should totally work. Why wouldn't this work? Um, well, the problem here is that we've, we've, we've declared something, but then we haven't actually drawn it on the screen. And remember, love is only going to draw what we have. <laughs> your, error, your error was your file doesn't exist at that part. Yeah. So you see that the problem I'm having is that I'm cheating a lot uh, by using something that's you know like on those cooking shows where they're all everything's already prepared, and I'm just uh -huh. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay just dies now. I know. That aim souffle is going to be purple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you may have gotten a green screen. That's fine. Let's um, let's figure out how to draw this thing on on our screen like a die. Now this is going to be a little bit, this is going to be a lot of stuff to type. Uh, and it's not necessarily going to all be pretty, but um, we'll try it first. So we'll do a uh, love. So this is, this is in the, um, this is in the draw function. And we're doing love.graphics.draw. And then the first thing that we need to do is tell it what to draw. Now, this is a little bit confusing because you might think, well, we want to draw slash image slash die1.png, right? Well, no. We want to draw the thing that is set to that. So we just we, we, we reference that variable. And that's a pretty common thing in programming where just because that's how it works, you have to you, you you use the function whose job it is to go find a file, and once that's done, you've assigned it to a variable, and so then when you when you want to actually use the image, you use a different function whose job it is to refer to the location of the file and then to draw it on the screen. When to use one and not the other can be a little bit confusing at first because you might think you know you might think that you just want to do one thing, but yeah, so I don't know how to tell you to learn that other than just to look up those functions in the docs and, and see what it tells you to do. And then maybe somewhat predictably, um, we want to do things like, uh, let's put it um, maybe sort of halfway down, the, uh, sort of in the middle of the screen more or less, so that's the canvas width divided by two. And then we'll do the canvas height divided by two. And all of this stuff, again, this isn't just me like just making up stuff to put into the parentheses. This is all in the documentation for this function. So if, 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 you're, think, if you're sitting down you know, after this and thinking, okay, I'm going to try to make a game. I remember there was something about drawing some stuff in the function love.draw. Go look at the documentation. Maybe do a search on the internet, you know, how to draw something on screen in love 2D. Uh, and and it will tell you what all of these values are. Um, I don't even remember. There's, there's so many values um, that this accepts. I'm just going to put a bunch of zeros in and see what happens. What's that? No, I think there's actually more because there's, um, no, that's not it. Yeah, because there's like scaling and rotation and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, let's. Yeah, so here's the values that I had. 
um, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, and then 0, 0. That should do it, maybe. That's to scale the die down. So if you put like a, if you don't have that in there, then the dice are going to be huge because they're just really, really big. Yeah, they're like huge. Two, uh, oh, right here? Okay. That's not even all on the screen. Let me try to get that on the screen. There we go. Cool. What's that? The width and the height, the CWCH, where they come from? They are, they should be up at the very, yeah, the very top of your uh, file. You will have defined a local CW equals some number, and then local CH. Here, I'll, I'll dive up there real quick and people can review their work. See right there. So possibly you're getting something that looks like that. Yeah? Cool. All right. It's good. It's good. I feel like we made progress. Um, what time is it and how? Okay, I think I'm going to actually even simplify this further. Um, it may be less of a competitive game and a dice roller game. We'll see. We'll see how far we go. But let's let's shoot first for a dice roller. Um, so it won't be a game. It'll just be a handy D6 roller for you. Um, so uh, let's see. The first thing for that we would need to do is. Well, we're going to need some numbers, right? I mean, every that, that's what we need, right? So take out some comfort die here. So how can we get a random number on a computer? Does anyone have any ideas, people who haven't done this before? People who haven't done this before? No, you cheat. Anybody have an idea? I don't believe nobody has an idea. <laughs> where could we get a random number in real life? Like if we were looking around the room and we needed a number like right now, where could we get one? What's that? <laughs> sure. So how would that be? Like maybe by row, one, two, three, and then seat one, two, three. So we could count, count on a matrix. What else? There's a really common source of numbers that we, we refer to. In fact, I just referred to it myself in form of a question. That, but that was way before. Time, a clock, right? So computers have clocks, and we can kind of tap into that. Um, it's a, I mean, it's super easy. Do I have a, no, I don't. Um, I don't know how to do anything in Tmux. OK, that's fine. We'll, we'll skip over it. It's super easy in Bash. If you're in a terminal uh, and you just type in the word date, you'll get like a number. And if you do a date, I think plus percent s, lowercase s, I think, is that epoch time? Uh, you'll get a really long string of single, uh, of a uh, really long string of digits that if you keep doing it up, up, enter, up, enter, up, enter, it'll change constantly. It's ticking all the time. So this is a pretty good source of, of I say pretty good, it's like a, an acceptable sometimes source of, of random numbers in a computer. And the way that that works in Lua, in Lua actually, oh, it's 
is yes. Um, <laughs> that's good. I'm going to stop scolding people for reading the manual. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. People are angry now because it's not random enough. Don't worry. This is a, it's a, a D6 roller. We're going to be fine. Um, so if you do math.randomseed, os.time, parentheses, parentheses, uh, then what you're doing is you're telling Lua to establish, to kind of switch on this sort of awareness of, OK, I'm going to need a random number. So whenever I need that, I'm going to do some calculations based on like right now, whatever time I get back from my computer. And I'll, I'll do fancy things and then give you a number back. And admittedly, it is not super random. Like I was doing tests for a different project last night, and I was trying to get I was trying to get some probability of dice rolls, and it was just a joke. It was it was ridiculous. Um, it was clearly not accurate. So it, it's not great, but it, it works for our purposes. So we establish this random seed in the love load uh, function. And then we will use that random seed in our draw function to figure out what to draw on the screen. So let's do a, what are we using? We're using Dave, right? We're just, we're, we're doing the human stuff. Let me indent this. There we go. Yeah, so we draw Dave. Uh, constantly. That'll probably have to change. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to invoke this random function that we've created, this random seed, and we're going to get a number from it. And the way that you do that... Yes. Um, the thing is, th so... All right, so we need to tell love slash Lua, like we need to say, hey, I want a number now. I want a random number. And we want, we want, what do we want to have trigger that? What, on a phone, what would you expect to, how would you get a number, like a dice number on a phone? Like a, probably just a tap or something, right? So that's basically a mouse click. Like this on a phone is a mouse click. So we really, we, we don't want to put our little call of randomness in our draw function, because what does the draw do? It repeats every millisecond, right? We don't want that many random numbers. We just want it on, on demand. So there happens to be a nice little function in love for this very purpose, and it is called function, uh, well, we can, we can use it by, by calling function love dot mouse released. Why released and not something like, I don't know, pressed? Correct. We want it when we, when we, that would give us a random number for as long as we held the button down. That's not what we want. We want the button, we want the, the one number and the one event that we can track is when we do that. So, I mean, there are times where you may want to use the press, a mouse press. Um, and in fact, in the, in the bigger version of this little game, uh, I have some audio playing so that if people hold down the, the mouse key, then audio starts like you're sort of powering up the dice and then you release it and you feel like you've done something special. And it is all illusory. Um, okay, so when that happens, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a, we're going to get a random number. What do we want to do with a random number? Does anyone know? Because remember, computers, they can't track in, what's that? Change that. Okay, so first we're going to save it. Because if we grab it here when it's released, then we, we need to take a snapshot. And computers can't keep track of anything unless you put it in a box, a variable. So what would be a good variable name for Dave's uh, role? Dave, wait, what? Dave what? Who? Dave Dice or Dave Dot Dice? Dot Dice. Remember, in Lua, tables, we have a table called Dave. We established that way up here. 
right? So in order to throw stuff into that table, we just put a dot and then some word. And, and like I say, it can, it can be any word. So <laughs> not that. That's the one thing it cannot be. Um, so Dave dot dice equals, right? Because that's how we set a variable. And then we need to use a math, uh, I mean a Lua function called math dot, and we just invoke it with random, oop, random. Uh, and we need to give it a range. Um, and the way that Lua expresses ranges in this context is a comma. Different programming languages do it differently. You'll see it, you know, whatever. But in this case, that's, in Lua, that's how you do it. So you're saying, okay, I want you to get that, I want you to invoke the random seed to get a number, but I want you to constrain that number between one and six. That's probably, I mean, that's, that's not a whole lot to work with, and, and maybe rolling a d20 would have been better, but we're, we're doing d6 because that's the image that I found, so we'll... Sorry, you could, this is actually going to just do the random seed. Correct. If we hadn't done that, it would be I think it'll actually just fail silently. Uh, okay, sorry. No? Well, isn't that, okay, okay, so, okay. I'm gonna comment it out right now, and we're gonna test. Oh wait, that won't work anyway, never mind. We'll, we'll just take it on faith right now that in, some, in one way or another, if you had not started the random seed, either you would get the same number back every time or you would fail silently. Um, it's gonna feel approximately the same because it's not gonna change. Okay, so now we do have a number. Um, and when we, when we get the number, we want it to be reflected in the dice image, right? That's, that's the goal here. We wanna, we wanna see what we got. Um, you might think, well, let me ask you what you think. Where do you think we would redraw, where would we put this new image? How could we define, now let's say we rolled a six and we've got Dave D, by default is die one, right? So how do we tell it, where, where do we tell it? Yes, okay, so, yep. Uh, no, actually, well, I mean, okay, so, I think you're actually kind of saying the same thing. So, what I, I think is saying here is, we're saying, okay, so we're gonna say that, now that we have a random number, we are going to then over, override what we've already told love in the beginning, Dave's image is. So we're gonna say Dave.image is now instead of die one dot uh, png, we're going to say that it's love dot graphics dot new image, and then the path to the die. But here's where it gets tricky. So we don't know what random has gotten. It's gotten a number one through six. How do we know what image to load? Oh, you could do that, actually. Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, but that's a great way to do it. Um, but this is really good because this is something that you're going to be doing in Lua a lot, which is concatenating uh, data. And, and really in programming, a lot of times you're, you're doing things like this. So. Uh, in Lua, if you want to put two th things sort of together, it is, for whatever reason, two dots. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here. So what we're saying is that the new image is gonna be just in the same old image location, and then slash die, and then close the quote, and then dot dot, meaning don't stop here, I'm gonna give you a diff another value and we're going to refer to the value as dave.dice, because that's what we named it, right? Dave.dice has some number, we don't know what it is, so put it there, and then again, don't stop. Keep, keep, keep going, uh, and then it ends in .png. So we're basically telling it, I want you to kind of construct a file path for me, and that file path should contain 
image slash die, whatever's in Dave Dice, and then dot PNG. Um, I think, okay, so I think what's happening here is that love is probably protecting us from that. No, it doesn't. It only works in the current, uh, in the old release, and the new one actually changes the one that's happening. Okay. It's really unsafe. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that, nevertheless, right now, because I'm on a time limit, but I will. I will keep that in mind in the future. Um, so if you, let's see where we're at now. So if you launch your little program and click with your virtual finger, you should be seeing your dice change. Is anyone not seeing that? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't see, uh, like I know that you give us like a series of images, that, but how, how does it know which are which? You know, I mean. Well, it doesn't, and that's probably why it's not the greatest uh, okay. format. Okay. So we're just telling that's it, cool. okay. take, you, we're, we're constructing a path okay. from, cool. for, so from whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog, which is then dog, passed dog, dog, to, dog, dog, yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got a green background? I did get the green background, but beyond that, I'm not going to Is anyone else on nine and not, and not seeing the die? What's that? Oh, okay. What was it? Was it just the the series of? Yeah, that's a lot of zeros for anybody. So you're saying to put another line in here where you're uh, formatting, or where, where you're converting the, uh, the, the value? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Cool. Go for it. Cool. Oh, wait. This is a Dvorak keyboard. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There you go. This will work. Okay. Sort of. And the return key isn't actually the return key. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? It's the backslash or the pipe. So it's just like a, a printf style um, thing. It's usually the, the easiest way to do it. Um, I am. Good observation. Where's your quote key? 
Yeah. yeah, I think that should be standard, yeah. So that, that, that's one way to do it. Oh, that's great, yeah. Um, alternatively, you could go something like, oh, oh, enter doesn't work. How do you want to press enter? No, uh, this one with the... That one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to really like necessarily go into that. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. That, that's yeah. I liked that idea, um, but yeah, I don't want to get too deep into that right now. So yeah, cool. There you go. We've formatted using a um, I don't know what are those called? Not variables. Uh, string format, I guess. Um, converting this, yeah. And if, if Mr. Lua over here says that, um, that the other way is unsafe, I would rather do it this way. So if you want to copy that, that's fine. OK, so I think we, I think we probably have time. I feel like we probably have time to do a little bit of sound, because I, I want to kind of make this more than just, just graphics. So. We are. I think I think I still have what. Uh, oh no, we're we're almost done, aren't we? Uh, I think it might be three thirty. Is it three thirty or three? Uh, three ten. Okay. Yeah. Then we don't r really have time for sound necessarily. Um, okay. We can. All right. Let's let's try it. Okay. So it isn't hard. That's the good news. Um, in fact, you could probably honestly kind of figure it out on your own. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, oh, you messed up my keyboard because now it's in US. And there we go. Now it's better. Yeah, it's better. Well, I still have to blame you. Um, OK, so everything's working better now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable up at the top. And we're going to call it, um, what did I call it here? Um, I'm going to call it rumble, because, no, actually, yeah, yeah, or tumble. Let's call it tumble. And we're going to give it a, it's similar to defining a, a new image, except that instead of an image, it's not that, it's audio, I think. Um, love.audio.new source. So it's, it's a lot like the new image.new or the graphic.new image. It's just a source of audio. And uh, it's pretty much, I don't think I've actually distributed the sound to you, so we're going to have to distribute that. So we'll do um, sound.dice.aug, comma, uh, stream. Oh, it's off screen. Yeah, it's too wide. And actually, for consistency, I'm going to just convert these to single quotes because I think that's what I've been using. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, that looks. I don't know if strictly this next one is um, necessarily ne necessary in this case because I forget what the default is, but I'm going to put it in anyway because it's something that's that's good to know about. Um, so we're going to just do we're going to use the same variable name, and we're going to tell love to set looping as uh, false. And that is simply, I, I think it defaults to not looping anyway, but I'm going to put it in there because that way you, you'll remember that there's an option to loop a sound. So if you have a background music or something like that, then you could set looping to true, and then it would just keep playing that sound you know, for as long as you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so, so that has established the variable. So hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. We, we, kind of set up some variables, and then we start using them in the code. And that's, that's kind of pretty typical. And then where do we want to trigger this sound, do we think? Do we want it in the draw method, the load method? Where would we want this?
What's that? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and it's hard for you actually to answer this because you haven't heard the sound yet. So actually, in this case, I want it on the release again because it's going to be the sound of that. So we just want that to happen once. And playing a sound is as easy as triggering it by saying love.audio.play uh, and then telling it what sound to actually play. Now, you don't have this sound yet, so let me dash out to my master directory here. And I'm going to secure copy this file to Oh, a syntax error? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I forgot to bundle the sound. Uh, I'm putting that onto a website right now. Okay. So if you guys uh, wget slackermedia.info slash tank slash dice dot og. Oh, nope, sorry, just tank. It should just be a tank. Like that. Grab that and put that in a, in a, a folder called SNB for sound. Try that out. See if that works. Cool. Yeah, great. All right. I mean, no, I meant that sincerely. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Great. Um, great. You're a programmer now. Um, all right. So I, I do need to cover one more thing. And that is how to get this thing into a format that people can use. Um, <laughs> it's, I, you're you're kidding, but it's really really close to what we're about to do. Um, <laughs> um, let me grab my uh, sound file here. Can you see this? Are you seeing this? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. So we've got a directory. This is your project directory still, and you're. Um, you probably want to do this in a terminal. Um, I would do it in a terminal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a zip. Um, and actually, this might not work on Mac OS. Um, yeah, anyway, zip. Um, let's call it uh, dice, dice roller. Dice roller dot. And then we're going to call it zip, because I think some zip tools will get really confused if you try to create something that's not called a zip. Uh, and then we're going to do a dash r for recursive, which means, hey, if you find a direct, if you come across a directory, grab all the stuff in the directory. That's what recursive means. Um, and then font, image, and then main, 
and sound. So all everything in the folder pretty in, in this directory pretty much. So what we're doing here is we're we're using the zip command to create a new archive called diceroller.zip. And we're saying all of these things here, that's what we want to put into that archive. So you, ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> Um, and then, so now we've got a dice roller dot zip. Uh, we are going to rename that with a mv tool uh, command, rather, and we're going to call it instead of dice dash roller dot zip. And this you could actually probably do in a, um, a file manager. Um, we're going to call it a love. So dice roller dot love. And and if you do that on your machine, you may even see that the icon changes. It'll change from like a generic zip archive to a little love icon, probably. And it freaks out if you don't just, uh, if you don't do the intermediate step of creating a zip first? I think it probably depends on the zip tool, okay. but I, I, I'm pretty sure I've run into problems with it. I feel like I have. I feel like zip itself is pretty picky about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I, yeah, what I usually do is make a little make file that just does all that stuff for me and then I don't have to bother with it, but yeah. Um, yeah, so now that, that package right there is, um, it's a love file. And if you send it to a friend and say, hey, if you need to roll a d6, um, you should use this really not very random application that I wrote. Um, and, and they'll be and as long as they download the love package and install it, uh, they'll be able to do that. They'll be able to. They they do not need Lua per se. They just need to get love. Like whatever process they get love by, the, the, everything will be self-contained in there. Um, and that includes uh, Android phones. So if you go to love2d.org and install love from the site. And I say that significantly because the Play Store has an older version. Um, then you'll be able to play your, just pretend like this is on the screen, really big. Uh, you'll be able to play your little dice roller on your phone just as you are on your screen. Um, so it's a pretty easy way really to get a nice and quick little app on a phone without having to like go through the whole Android, um, the APK or the um, SDK for Android and stuff like that. Um, the love application on Android is a little bit, it's not quite perfect yet. There's like no way to choose your files. So you have to sort of tell your Android phone, hey, when you see a love file, open it in this, in this application. So it's not, it's not perfect, but they're still working on it. It is technically available for iOS as well. But from the instructions that I saw, um, you, you pretty much have to compile it for iOS. And it looked like Xcode and stuff like that. So probably not something that most of your users would be doing. Um, that's everything that I have, I think. So and, and actually, part of, the, part of the paper thing was we were going we to randomize um, some numbers. So I guess, I guess I'll do that really quick, but you don't have to follow along on this one. No, I think it was this one. Oh. One to, one to six. No, one to 10, I said, right? Okay, so paper time. Anyone who wrote down the number two, what is your win or lose condition that you wrote down along with two? No one wrote down two? Yeah, aren't they though? How about the number five? Anybody wrote down five? Five minutes left. <laughs> How about the number eight? People did understand the instructions. Okay, yes. What 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 win or lose condition did you write down? Uh, minus the period of eight. Is the loser or the winner? Winner. Uh, so if if eight or a 
above you win, but lower you lose. OK, so who has been excluded from winning at this point? In, if you did not do eight or above, you have lost the game at this point. You, you lost? All right, so remember, OK, so remember that. So number four, who's, who's four? OK, what was your win or lose condition? Above four wins, so that means he can still win. Uh, and what else was it? Okay, but for exactly what happens? Four or less, you lose. Okay, so you lost yourself. Like you explicitly wrote into your. Okay, that's fine. I didn't. I didn't give any requirements. What about number ten? Really? I thought for sure everyone would write down 10, because that would be the obvious order of execution. I feel like, OK. I feel like people aren't maybe speaking up. Um, nine? Nine? Do we have any nines? Ooh, nines. OK, what, what's the condition? Uh, if you're above the average, then you win. Above average? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right, above average. So all right, that's not going to be possible. But OK, cool. that's a, I like that one. One. Yes. I understand. That's fine. Um, uh, my reason is Nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, three. I mean, and, and that you did understand. That's just changing the game. Three is. Shout hey. Shout hey. Nice. All right. Make a mark on the whiteboard to win. Did you provision for markers? No. Oh, okay, okay, cool. I didn't. Um, uh, I know, I'm, I'm running out of time. Um, uh, six. Who wrote six down? Uh, but you may override the previous conditions. No? You, you definitely. Okay. Oh, okay, all right. Um, seven? Yes? Yeah. Blue? Blue? Okay, and no win condition, just a lose. Uh, you said you wrote? So um, seven or above you win. Seven or above you win. What, was, what were we on, six or seven just now? Seven. 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 Okay, and then I wrote down, oh, I was on three, so I, I skipped my turn. Uh, and the first person to be eliminated wins. So, um, so that was you, actually. Um, but that, I mean, the, random, so yeah. But that, I just wanted to kind of do that because I think sometimes we, um, how many more minutes? Count, just count down. Um, 60, 59. Um, so I, I think sometimes when, you, we're, when we go to a computer, we kind of, our brain starts to separate and we're like, okay, now we have to go and code something. And you sort of put the horse before the, cart before the horse. Um, and it's important to think about like that analog side of things, of, of designing a game basically from nothing. I mean, you can take sheets of paper and write down rules and then see how they go together, or you can roll some die and see how they, they merge. Um, and so it's important to, before you start coding, like really think about like what the game is. Like, where's the, where's the game? That'll bring a lot of focus. It'll, it'll tell you what to look up online when you're thinking, uh, what do I need to do first? Like, what, what, what can I, sh you know, I need to draw some graphics. What graphics? Well, I, I don't know, but have a game in mind first. That's, uh, that's the thing that I wanted to illustrate. So thanks for uh, uh, coming to my talk, and I hope you got a lot out of it. Go buy my book and stuff like that. <laughs>